Hello everyone. This course will primarily focus on physical design flow and this particular section will talk about the physical design flow overview. So for example, there are multiple steps in a flow. It, the first step is basically floor planning and inside floor planning again there are two or three steps. Then there is something called as placement and routing and inside placement and routing basically we call it as PNR. There are again multiple style steps like clock tree synthesis, crosstalk, DRC clean and and so on so this particular section will talk about the overview of the physical design flow and the following sections will be taking each and every step into detail and trying to explain it in, in with the help of some lectures okay so to start with we'll be starting with the floor planning step of, of physical design flow the first step of floor planning is to define the width and height of core and die so in a, in a chip let's say if, if you have a square shaped chip this is how the core and the die will look like this is the core section where why we call it as core because this is the area where primarily your netlist sits the core logic basically any core logic whatever the functionality and all that will be sitting in this particular area that's why we call it as the core of the chip and the surrounding it with, uh, after, uh, after leaving some amount of space across the core you see the die section okay so this step will define the width and height of core and die this is the height this is the width how do we come up with this particular square structure or how do we decide the width and height of core and die that will be covered in the following sections this will be this this section is just the overview of physical design flow so the first step is to define width and height of core and die okay the second step is to define the locations of pre-placed cells i'll be talking about what is pre-placed cells in the following sections for now just assume this pre-placed cells are are cells which are uh, which have got, uh, got certain functionality for example this block might uh, might uh, function as an adder this block might function as a multiplier this block might function as a divider so all these predefined functions are already encapsulated in these blocks they are they are built separately and those cells are called as pre-placed cells we can give it a name as macros we can call it as ips as well okay so these are the pre-placed cells the second step is to define the locations of pre-placed cells so the way the locations of pre-placed cells are decided is based upon their connectivity for example the block c has got most of its pins which are close to this side and, the, and there are some pins which are sitting over here as well so that this makes it easier for connectivity that's how we come up with the with the locations of pre-placed cell and there are many other things we'll talk about that in in in, in the following sections but this is the second step where we define the locations of pre-placed cells and the locations of pre-placed cells are decided based on their connectivity with the complete netlist okay on which part of the netlist do they sit and do they want to access the pins access the boundaries very often and so on and so on so these things will decide the locations of your pre-placed cells okay the third step is to oh these uh, this is just a naming convention saying that these are our pre-placed cells the third step is to surround the pre-placed cells with decoupling capacitors so the concept of decoupling capacitors is explained in a separate section it, it's a it's, ex, uh, it's explained as a part of crosstalk videos uh, yeah, you might want to have a look into those videos but uh, the concept is basically this blocks this blocks and this blocks have got some internal logic they have got they, uh, they already have got gates and and uh, flip-flops and clock cells which are sitting inside it and they might switch very rapidly so during a pe uh, during a finite period of time let's say this particular block switches switches at the same instant and it there will be a huge amount of current demand so so this particular block should be this particular po power supply which will be which will be presenting in some time from now this particular power supply should be able to cater to the power needs of this blocks when these blocks are switching from from logic zero to logic one so for example when so blocks are switching from logic zero to logic one the uh, basically there are capacitors that gets charged and this capacitors how do they get charged they take charge from the power supply and this power supply should be able to cater to these needs if they are not there is uh, there are there is a way that we can surround this with decoupling capacitors so decoupling capacitors you can consider them as power supply which already has got some amount of power already we basically we charge we keep this decoupling capacitors charged and whenever there is a current demand or whenever there is a need for for uh, uh, for charge from this particular blocks the decoupling capacitors will be feeding them okay and for the remaining amount of time the decoupling capacitors will itself get charged by the power by the main power supply so we have talked about this in a separate section called as crosstalk you might uh, want to have a look into those videos Okay, so the, the third step is to surround the pre-placed cells with decoupling capacitors. 
so this is the steps that it that it will uh, cover so we have, we have a decap one in the top of block a block b we have uh, we have d4 between block a block b we have decap 2 and we have decap 3 so we have surrounded the encapsulated the blocks with the decoupling capacitors they are basically you can also treat this decoupling capacitors as as a coupling uh, as, as a coupling element between the blocks and the power supply basically this decoupling capacity so this blocks will now need not depend completely on the power supply they can get their charge from decoupling capacitors so all these are covered in very greater detail in crosstalk videos you might want to have a look into them okay next is power planning this section also has been covered in 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 the in the crosstalk videos where we talk about the need of power planning or the way the power planning has been done over here so what we do let let me explain you what we do as a power planning so we create a mesh we create a mesh kind of structure instead of having a one source of power supply we will have multiple sources of power supply assuming this color of the line is referred to as vss and there will be one more that will be coming that is called as vdd and let's call the the cross as the contacts so if you have this vss lines you see that there are multiple vss lines and they are they are uh, they are arranged in a grid fashion okay and there are multiple vdd lines which are again arranged in a grid fashion okay now you know any cell which is sitting over here will tap the power supply from its nearest power source and ground okay and the reason to have this kind of mesh structure is because we, we don't want power to be coming only for from one place for example if the if the, the traditional circuitry that we have it has got a power supply sitting over here it, it it has got a power supply sitting over here and there's some logic which is sitting over here and this logic whenever it charges or discharges it has it has to take the power from the from the main supply we are trying to avoid that kind of structure and creating a mesh structure where now logic which is sitting over here can draw the power from its nearest power lines so these all things has been covered in greater detail in in the crosstalk videos you might want to have a look into them where we explained that when this kind of situations might arrive so this kind of situations might arrive when let's say thousands of logics are charging from 0 to 1 and they demand current at the same time at that kind at that that kind of scenario the power planning structure the mesh structure of the power planning is very helpful okay so this is the this is the next step of power planning the next step is pin placement so now any logic any any gate uh, sorry any circuitry will have got some input pins and output pins we have to identify those pins and place it somewhere over here in the in the in the die area in the in the area where between the core and the die so these are the pins so we have already a circuit we have already a predefined circuit which we will be analyzing uh, in this uh, in this particular course and uh, from that particular uh, uh, circuit we have we have got this pins which is d out these are all the output side so for 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 the sake of simplicity we have kept all the output pins on the right side we have kept all the input pins on the left hand side and these are the this this is the this is the way they have been arranged d in 1 d in 4 clock 1 clock 2 d in 2 and d in 3 and there are reasons why we placed it in in not in a not in an uh, ascending order fashion but in some in in uh, in, a, in location something like this for example if d in 1 is over here d in 2 lies over here so there is a reason we have done it and we will be explaining that in the following sections but the next step the the the, the next step of this of the of the floor planning is pin placement okay and the pins are also located close to logic that we'll be seeing over here so we'll talk about how the pins are being placed or the logic behind placing the pins and and what can go wrong and what can go right while placing the pins if you if you play let, let's say if d out one was not ho, not over here but over here and d out two was over here so what can go wrong we'll talk about them in the in the following lectures okay and finally you have a logical cell placement blockage what does this this do is this ensures us nothing we, we place a, blo a blockage in the in the area between the core and the die which which ensures that there will be no logic cells accidentally placed in this area because these are only for the pins area these are only for pin accessibility okay so this is the logical cell placement uh, placement blockage it says that the name suggests that the logical cell placement blockage whenever there is a logical cell and a placement blockage uh, terms coming over it says that it will this particular area will block the placement of logical cells so wherever you see this this kind of thing there, there will be no logical cells that will be placed over here okay so that's that's the final uh, final uh, uh, step of your floor planning and now your floor planning is ready for placement and routing step this floor planning has been a very basic basic floor planning that we have been doing for the circuitry that we will be designing in some time from now so this is a very basic floor plan for 
for that for that kind of circuitry but the concepts remains the same for example the mesh structure or the de decoupling capacitors or the concept of logical cell placement blockage this this will be remaining the same from a smaller chip to a to a to a multi million gate chip so most of the concepts remains the same okay this is just an overview of the small circuitry that we'll be trying to design so what we'll do is since i'm running out of time the our floor plan is already ready we'll look into a, a placement and route overview we'll look what are the steps in placement and route only the overview part in this section and the next sections will be talking in detail about each and every step of the placement and route so let's try to do all this in the next video thank you